before I call the next member, can I just uh, um, mention to those in the gallery that uh, we welcome your uh, interest in the debate, but yours is a passive role and you cannot participate, so I'll ask you to respect that convention of the House. I call Rahui Katani. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Every once in a while a debate occurs in this House in which key concepts emerge that are, cr that are central, that are crucial to the expression of the democratic process. And this bill is one of those opportunities. It is a chance to revis revisit the theories around the very nature of democracy, the enactment of universal freedoms, the notion of political participation. In its title, this bill prompts us to consider the notion of freedom and where it fits, in this case, in tertiary education institutions. It asks us to consider the place of freedom within a democracy, such as freedom of speech, press, religion or association, and how government properly respects such freedoms. And it seeks the public response to this. I come to this bill mindful of a political uh, sideshow that's been capturing the interests of the media over the last week. Last Tuesday, a rookie MP from the ACT Party used her maiden speech to call for a reduced emphasis on government and a call for simpler legislation. She then proceeded to contradict those two core principles by demanding from government an immediate assurance that they would insert the word free into the Marine and Coastal Takutai Moana Bill. Notwithstanding the obvious oxymoron of just, juxtaposing <laughs> the word free alongside the word public, the Maiden Day Initiative was an appalling attack on the parliamentary process. In demanding an amendment to a bill which has only just entered the select committee pro phase, the new MP chose to override the vital role that the public play in commenting on legislation. And it is exactly this same attack which continues unabated in this debate around the Education Freedom of Association Amendment Bill. I want to make it absolutely clear the parliamentary process is intricately tied to the notion of the people's voice. It is the opportunity for the citizenship to have their say, to express their views about any legislation in the, before the House. And we must protect that right as a basic axiom of democracy. For example, the Takatai Moana Bill is at the very starting point of the Select Committee process. This is the opportunity for the Select Committee to call for public submissions, to hear evidence on those submissions, and subsequently re recommend amendments to the House. It should not be overridden by any politician or any political party. In this Education Freedom of Association Bill, the Select Committee process was absolutely fundamental to how we should perceive the significance of the proposals debated tonight. Why should we set ourselves a lesser target for the Takutai Moana Bill? We must resist at every opportunity political parties which seek to override the democratic process and interfere with the parliamentary process. So when we come to this bill, we know that the people have spoken with a clear voice of opposition. There were 4,837 submissions, and 98 per cent of them opposed this bill. Let me share some of the voices of the people with the House. Towards the southern end of my electorate of Te Taitonga, Te Ropu Whai Putaki of the Otago University Māori Law Students Association opposed the bill on the basis that it, and I quote, attacks the Māori student voice and their ability to have democratically elected collective organisations on campus by removing the existing right of students to self-determination. In the centre region of Te Taitonga, the Ngaitahu Māori Law Centre opposed the bill, promoting support for student associations and noting particularly that Māori student rōpū have an understanding and facilitate te ao and tikanga Māori. And for the sake of completeness, at the northern end of my electorate, Ngai Tauira from Victoria University also opposed, stating, it is our belief that until Māori become a normal feature of the tertiary environment, then Māori student associations will be necessary to ensure equity and support of our students in the tertiary environment. 
Mr Speaker, as the member for Te Taitunga, I have to say that these three organisations alone provide a compelling case for opposing this bill. But the Māori Party extends past the boundaries of Te Taitunga, of course, and so just for the record, I have reviewed the evidence from across other electorates as well. Te mana mātauranga o te waiariki oppose this bill, declaring, we believe that this bill is unnecessary as the status quo works. In the Tamaki Makaurau electorate, the views were just as strongly held. Ngā Tawira Māori, Auckland University Māori Students Association, opposed this view, noting that the bill adversely affects the ability of Ngā Tawira Māori to, access, to exercise tino rangatiratanga, kaitiakitanga and manakitanga, which are guaranteed in te tiriti o waitangi. And the advice of te mana ākona, uh, National Māori Tushri Student, Students Association was that in our extensive consultation with Māori over this particular issue, it has become abundantly clear that iwi support Māori student ropu on campus. Mr Speaker, there is a worrying comment that has appeared in some of the contributions of, of members that might imply that a considerable amount of the 4,837 submissions received were of a pro forma template no nature. I wanted to share the words of the people as they appeared before the committee because it provides such a clear picture that the majority of an overwhelming number of submissions to this bill were in opposition to it. The reality is that there is a need for student associations, a fact emphasised to the committee by John Kingy, a welfare officer for OSA. He opposed the bill, saying, Oftentimes we are forced to turn away students who may require some assistance as we simply do not have the capacity that universal associations do to meet the demands of students. Finally, Mr Speaker, I return to the notions of democracy and freedom I spoke of earlier. Benjamin Franklin once said, democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for, for lunch. We must not allow the democratic process to be manipulated so that the lamb doesn't even get to have a say and the wolves determine what's on the menu with no regard for the voice of the people. The people have spoken with one voice in this bill. The Māori Party will stand with Te Mana Akona, the National Māori Tertiary Students Association, Te Mana Mātauranga, Te Tapuai Orehua Research Centre, Ngai Tahu Māori Law Centre, Te Hungaroa Māori o Aotearoa, Te Toi Tawira mō Te Matariki, the National Forum for Supporting Māori Students and Staff in Tertiary Education, Te Ropu Takawainga Māori o Ngā Kura Mātauranga o Aotearoa, the Māori Liaison Tertiary Association of New Zealand, Te Toi Ahurangi, Komiti Māori within the Tertiary um, Education Union, and Te Kahui Amokura, the Māori Committee of the New Zealand Vice-Chancellor's Committee, amongst a cast of thousands who petitioned Ma uh, Parliament to throw out this bill. We support the position of students that the legislative framework allows students themselves to be the collective decision makers on whether their associations be voluntary or compulsory, as well as enabling choice regarding their individual membership of an association. We value the role that student associations and their representatives, including Māori student rōpū and their representatives, have played as strong advocates within tertiary institutions and the wider sector for high quality academic standards, adequate government investment and for course fee maintenance or reductions. Students associations also provide a range of important services to students. Welfare and academic advocacy, faculty and class representatives, financial assistance, legal help, counselling services, student social events, student clubs, student societies and student sports and recreation facilities. In effect, if this bill goes through tonight, it will kill student associations. That will be the practical effect of this bill. I was interested to hear that the Act member cites one reason for destroying student unions, the fact that some people in some student unions have misused student money. If this reasoning was to carry across into other areas, then the Act Party should be destroyed because its leader misused taxpayer money repeatedly. Com companies should be destroyed because some company directors have committed fraud. We have to be 
consistent. So that is the effect. That is what we should be doing. As a student, I benefited from student unions. So has my husband.